until the lions have their own historians. The history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. African history has often been overlooked and misrepresented in the past. In the 1830s, the German philosopher Hegel even claimed that Africa had no significant history or development to offer the world. This kind of narrow-minded dismissal of an entire continent's history is quite short-sighted. However, an African scholar rose to challenge this narrative, using scientific evidence to show that Africa is, in fact, the cradle of humanity and the birthplace of humankind. Sheikh Anta Diop stands out as a key figure in African history, known for his efforts to correct the often overlooked and misrepresented history of the continent. While his ideas have sparked debate among Western academics, African scholars hold him in high regard. In tribute to his significant impact, the Institut Fondamental d'Afrique Noire in Dakar, Senegal, was renamed Cheikh Anta Diop University, symbolizing his dedication to educating the world about Africa's rich heritage. Il est savant, il y a 150 ans, les contemporains de la naissance de l'égyptologie moderne ne savaient parfaitement que l'Égypte était une civilisation nègre et négro-africaine. Il ne manquait pas de science, absolument pas, mais ils ont falsifié sciemment. Diop's influence is growing, particularly in the black community, but there's a common misconception about the scope of his work. Many believe he only sought to establish the African roots of ancient Egyptians, but his research encompassed much more. In this video, we will reveal Diop's ultimate plan for Africa, why he is hated by Western academics, and why he remains alive today. This video was suggested by one of our subscribers. Cheikh Anta Diop, born in 1923, witnessed firsthand the impact of European colonization in Africa. He saw how colonial powers used various methods to mentally subjugate Africans, including teaching a distorted and diminished version of African history. Diop noted how Western narratives often denied the existence of significant civilizations and histories in Africa, suggesting that the continent had neither a noteworthy past nor any notable achievements. Diop understood that colonial education and the introduction of foreign religions like Christianity and Islam were tools used to undermine African identity, making the people feel inferior and submissive. This, he believed, was a strategy to prevent Africans from realizing their full potential. Observing international geopolitics, Diop realized that only strong, united regions like the United States, the USSR, or the forming European Union could effectively defend their interests on the world stage. He saw that the fragmented African colonies aspiring for independence were too small to face the challenges of an independent existence. Without unity, these nations would struggle on the international scene and remain vulnerable to new forms of exploitation and control by external powers. Therefore, Diop advocated for the Federation of African States. He argued that the independence of smaller countries in post-colonial Africa would be superficial if they remained isolated. They would face external pressures and economic forces that could lead them into the influence of more powerful nations. A federal solution, according to Diop, would counteract this risk and empower African nations to stand strong together. If you doubt the true geographic influence of Africa, as envisaged by Dr. Diop, review our recent video regarding the false representation of Africa's size on world maps. With regards to African unity, what did Cheikh Anta Diop think about our so-called North African nations? Cheikh Anta Diop recognized the often discriminatory and imperialist attitudes of North African populations. Recent events in Libya involving black Africans being kidnapped and sold as modern day slaves, discrimination against blacks in Tunisia and other North African nations further affirms Dr. Diop's assertions about this region of Africa. As a result, he didn't envision them being part of a unified African state. His focus was primarily on the empowerment and unification of so-called sub-Saharan African countries and people of African descent, the Americas. Diop's ultimate aim was to achieve an African renaissance, a revival and strengthening of African identity and culture, which he believed could be best realized through the formation of a federal state in sub-Saharan Africa. Cheikh Anta Diop wrote a thought-provoking article titled 
when will we be able to talk about an African renaissance? In it, he expressed his vision for Africa's future, emphasizing the need for the continent to rediscover its identity and shake off the damaging beliefs imposed through colonialism and foreign influences. Diop was confident that Africa could overcome these challenges, highlighting a unique, distinctive connection between Africans and nature that he believed was crucial for their cultural and spiritual revival. Diop also addressed the divisions within the African community, such as national, linguistic, and tribal differences. He stressed the importance of seeing beyond these divisions, encouraging people of African descent to unite as brothers and sisters. This unity, he believed, was essential for the creation of a true federal African state. Driven by these ideas, Diop turned to history with three main objectives. First, he wanted to replace harmful beliefs with a true understanding of African history, culture, and spirituality to instill pride and capability in black people. This is one of the prime motivations for this YouTube channel, to shake the very foundations of the lies perpetuated by Western academics about Africa. Second, he aimed to highlight the shared roots of all people of African descent to foster a sense of unity. Finally, he sought to rediscover ancestral political and economic systems to lay the groundwork for a future African federal state. This pursuit of history was Diop's pathway to crafting a shared vision for Africa. Sheikh Anta Diop, a notable African scholar, embarked on a journey to connect with the deepest roots of African ancestry. Initially, he was not particularly interested in Egypt. It seemed almost a distraction from his quest. However, as he delved deeper, he realized the profound significance of Egypt in the African narrative. Diop's primary goal was to reawaken a sense of historical consciousness among African peoples, believing this shared history could unite individuals beyond being just a population. He saw historical awareness as the binding force that turns a group of individuals into a people with a shared identity. During his exploration for a united black federal state, Diop discovered that the ancient Egyptians were black, a realization that initially puzzled him. But eventually, Egypt emerged as a crucial piece in his research, embodying the pinnacle of black achievement and a source of pride and inspiration. He argued that Egypt's advanced civilization, particularly its concept of mahat, or balanced thought, was a testament to the black intellect and creativity. Going beyond Egypt, Diop journeyed up the Nile to Nubia in present-day Sudan and to the African Great Lakes region, considered the cradle of humanity. He proposed that the unique cultures and spiritualities across Africa could be traced back to Egypt, with many people's histories originating from the Nile Valley and the Great Lakes. For Diop, these regions were to Africa what Greece and Rome are to the West, symbols of a rich, shared heritage. He believed that recognizing the importance of the Nile and the Great Lakes was crucial for the unity and development of African peoples, aligning with his vision of a federal African state. He believed that the remarkable civilizations of ancient Africa, characterized by wealth, peace, and brilliance, were built on strong political, economic, legal, and religious foundations. These societies had overcome challenges like poor governance and tribalism, offering valuable insights for contemporary African states. He argued against the imposition of Western systems in Africa, which he saw as oppressive and destructive. Instead, Diop advocated for a system rooted in African values and concepts, drawing on the ancient principle of ma'at, a concept embodying truth, balance, order, harmony, law, morality, and justice. This approach later termed Afrocentricity by African-American scholar Molefi Kete Asante, emphasizes returning to authentic African methods in all fields of thought. Diop's research went beyond just historical study. It challenged the deep-seated negative beliefs established during colonial times and pointed Africans towards a path of resurgence. This made his work a threat to the imperialist and colonial structures in Africa. Despite attempts to undermine his findings, Diop triumphed in scholarly debates notably at the 1974 Cairo Colloquium, where UNESCO acknowledged that ancient Egyptians were black. We have recently discussed this UNESCO conference in another video. His opponents have managed to limit
the widespread reading and understanding of his books, particularly among Africans and the African diaspora, meaning his work hasn't received the attention it deserves in these communities. See the video description for a collection of selected books of Cheikh Anta Diop. Cheikh Anta Diop dedicated his work to reviving the historical pride of black people, inspiring their creativity. Afrocentric intellectuals now have the responsibility to continue restoring and promoting African history and identity to all black people, boosting their creativity through newfound pride, strengthen the connections between African peoples, fostering a sense of shared identity. Keep studying each black civilization to create a comprehensive synthesis of the continent's human sciences, laying the groundwork for the federal state based on the principles of Mahat. Lead the political effort to turn this vision into reality. Sheikh Anta Diop was a remarkable figure, known for his intuition, courage, wisdom, and deep understanding of his era's challenges. He had immense love for his people and aspired for global brotherhood. Diop believed that an African who truly grasped his work would feel reborn with a historical consciousness, ready to contribute to a new civilization while recognizing the global contributions of their ancestors in science, culture, and religion. If you have made it this far into the video, we will encourage you to consider subscribing to this channel.